Hey, did you know that September was Suicide Prevention Awareness Month? Hey, what's going on, good people? It's your boy, James Harris, founder of a movement called Mental Health, which focuses on men's overall wellness, that mental health, as well as that physical health. And I'm also the author of a book called Man, Just Express Yourself, which is an interactive planner guide for boys and men to better express themselves. Um, I definitely want to extend this appreciation to my fellow clinicians who got this in the lobby or use these in a uh, session with our male clients. I definitely appreciate it. Salute to all those partners who have been using this as a tool for date night. Definitely appreciate your feedback, your reviews, and of course, praises to those parents who got this tool for their young ones. Back to school is coming up, so I definitely appreciate you guys who are you incorporate this in your school supplies. I definitely appreciate it. And of course, my fellas, thank you for being self-aware and, and using this tool to enhance where you are and where you're trying to get to. Um, so if you want to get a copy of that, just make sure you hit my website, menswhoheal.com, www.m-e-n-t-o-h-e-a-l.com. I definitely appreciate it. Or of course, you can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble's, Target, Walmart, pretty much anywhere books are sold. Um, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Submit me your questions as well. Send me an inbox. Um, or email or however you feel that you need to get in contact with me and you want me to read your question or answer your question or uh, do a video on a topic I definitely do that and we're making tremendous milestones with this channel I definitely appreciate it again it took off as rapidly uh, faster than I expected but I'm grateful that you guys are tuning in time after time so I definitely appreciate it um, so if you if you know somebody who is in an emergency situation uh, or is pondering suicide, definitely inform them or, or, or ensure that you call or give them the resources to the suicide prevention uh, hotline. It's a, it's a list of resources on my website as well, but in the meantime, 800-273-TALK, 800-273-8255, or they can call it uh, 911 immediately if they are uh, feeling suicidal or if you're in a position to ensure that you intervene to help them, be sure to call those. Again, that's 800-273-TALK, 800-273-8255, or call 911. Um, so when we're talking Suicide Prevention Month, that's that's been tapped for September. So a lot of people don't even know that suicide is one of those things that can be potentially preventable. Um, successful suicide prevention involves understanding suicide risk, understanding protecting factors, um, available for treatment and resources, procedures, and maintaining safety. I know oftentimes people ignore the fact of just talking to people, just associating with people, just picking up on those cues that could be potentially um, given from this person who is attempting to, you know, do suicide. So there's an average of maybe 123 suicide each day, and that number has probably increased uh, since many studies have taken place due to COVID, uh, due to the lack of jobs and resources and different things. Um, so it's definitely a, a situation to where it's, it's, it's serious. We should definitely pay attention to it. Um, and a lot of people don't know that suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in America. The second leading uh, for ages 25 to 34 and the third leading cause of eight for ages 15 to 24. You know, so those things are, are hideous numbers, you know, within, because if you think about it realistically, you fit into those categories potentially. Um, so, it's, or you're, you're, you got children that fit into those, you know, whether it's from, going to school or cyberbullying or feeling isolated or being teased. So it's so many different ranges that those age ranges can cover. Um, and then when we get into the signs, symptoms, and who, you know, those things are definitely scary. So when we're talking about signs and symptoms, we definitely want to talk about the, uh, ask somebody, you know, talk about it. Uh, do you want to die? Do you want to harm yourself? Do you want to kill yourself? Um, talk about, these people often talk about feeling empty, hopeless, um, having no reason to live like so again if you just listen to people you probably can put it together and probably reach out to somebody within the community or somebody who hey what do you think about xyz he said or oh, i heard her say you know just just to be on the safe side 
Um, and you can ask them, are you making a plan? Do you look for ways to kill yourself? Um, are you searching for lethal methods online? Like, are you stockpiling pills? You know, have you bought a gun recently? Um, talking about the guilt or shame, that's a big one that people often um, discuss within having suicidal um, ideologies. Talking about feeling trapped or feeling that there's no solution, you know, feeling um, the burden of others has gotten to them. Or just it, like if you hear somebody say the world or, or this relationship or this family would be better off without me. Those things um, are things that you need to pick up on. Um, using alcohol or drugs more than often, these people probably feel um, anxious or agitated, withdrawn from family and friends. Uh, they got a change in their eating habits or sleeping patterns. Um, showing rage or taking, talking about seeking revenge on different people, you know, little signs that you probably can pick up to. Um, taking a great risk to do different things that could lead to death, um, such as driving reckless or staying out um, at the bars, you know, just drowning themselves with alcohol or other substance. Um, and, and some people will be bold enough to just tell you, I'm um, thinking about um, completing suicide. So you definitely have to be attentive and listen. Um, these people often also display as, you know, different mood swings, sudden changes from very sad to very calm. Um, a lot of people who have completed suicide in the past have given a lot of their possessions away, um, saying goodbye to friends or family, whether that's via letter or just reaching out to different people. Um, and also, some people have done the due diligence of putting their affairs in order, whether they create the will or whether they're just reaching out again to those friends and family members say, hey, um, if something ever happens to me, it's a safe in my house and this is the combination. You know, so it's, it's different ways that you have to pick up on these things. Um, listen, if you need some tips to help someone, I would definitely suggest you ask direct questions. Uh, even though it, it's going to be hard to ask that person directly, are you thinking about harming yourself? Uh, for me, it's a little bit more easier because I want to ensure that I'm being direct enough for you to be able to answer that question. Even if it offends you, I think it's worth the offense because it can save your life. If I can get you a resource or get you to the hospital or get you somewhere to be evaluated, I'm willing to do that. So for me, you know, you, you thinking about hurting yourself? What's going on? You know, and... Of course, it's a little bit more tactful and cleaner within session, um, but for my family, friends, or if somebody I'm around and I feel that they need to hear it directly like that, then that's what it is. Um, another tip is listen to the answers. People with suicidal thoughts often feel alone, you know, so this can be a sure way to let them know that you care deeply and you're open to hearing what they have to say. Um, you also can do a safety check. I know a lot of people don't feel that they you know, they don't want to overstep their boundaries or be all in people's business. But if you're concerned for their well-being, then try to remove anything that they could use to harm themselves, whether it's alcohol, drugs, uh, medications, weapons, shop objects, um, access to the vehicle. You know, just do what you have to do to ensure that they're going to live um, beyond you guys' interaction. Um, another tip I would suggest is don't keep it a secret. You know, let them know that you will help them come up with a plan that involves selling a professional or utilizing many services and resources who are available. Um, NAMI.org, so many different groups. You can put in your zip code and they can find your resources within your geographical location. Of course, you can Google um, different people within the community that can help you, whether that's a therapist or a clinician or you can social media. There's so many different therapists out there now. I'm sure they'll be able to give you a resource or hit me directly, send me a message. I'll definitely, if you're not within my immediate location, I'll assist you with navigating where you are um, to, to find those resources. Another tip will be um, definitely ensure that they're seeking professional help. So unless you work in the mental health field or within this realm of helping people, a helping professional, it's important to suggest that they get additional help from uh, one of those, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a counselor, psychologist, a social worker, um, or evaluation by a, a, a treatment facility, you know, so depending on where you are, all of those things can definitely be available to you, and they should be available. So take advantage of them if you can. 
Um, when we're talking about suicide, we definitely can't ignore the risk factor. So suicide doesn't discriminate, you know, regardless of if you're a certain gender, a certain age, certain ethnicity, you definitely can be at risk. I think that's the misconception. Like, no, suicide doesn't discriminate. They don't care about how much money you have. They don't care about uh, if you're a pro athlete or a pro entertainer or whatever. Like, no, you can be affected by suicide as well. Um, so suicidal behavior is, is a, a complex thing. Um, and in, in some cases, there are signals, but in other case, cases, there are no like single causes or signals within that. So we definitely have to be vigilant and pay attention to the people that we're interacting with. Many different factors contribute to suicide. Someone may uh, made a suicide attempt in the past. Somebody may have had this within that family. Uh, but people most often risk tend to share specific characteristics of why they are in this position of feeling suicidal. Um, of course, we got depression, we got other mental disorders, we got substance use disorders. All of those things can be risk factors. Um, a risk factor now is COVID, certain medical conditions. I know a lot of people who have had COVID but don't want to relive those experiences or they know somebody who died from COVID and just felt that it was a severe, painful experience. So they don't want to do that. Um, so medical conditions can be a risk factor. Uh, prior suicide attempts, you know, it didn't happen the, the first or the second time you attempted. So this time you're going to get better at it by doing something a little bit more lethal. Um, so pay attention to that. That can be a risk factor. Another risk factor, again, could be family history, uh, whether that's mental disorder or substance use disorder or family history of suicide. Um, family violence can play, uh, 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 be a risk factor. Uh, sexual abuse can be a risk factor. Having guns or firearms in the homes, like those things can be a risk factor, especially if there's substances that increase those um, thoughts and feelings haven't recently been released from jail or uh, any other institution because now those people feel like they don't fit in with the society or they feel like they're going to be a burden on others. So oftentimes those people are, you know, at risk for suicide. Uh, being exposed to others with suicidal behaviors such as family members, peers, celebrities, you know, it becomes trendy. It becomes this thing of oh man, they did it. They ended all our problems. Let me do it. You know, so we just want to ensure that we're identifying those as risk factors. Uh, many people have some of the risk factors, but do not attempt suicide. It is also important that we note that suicide is not normal response to stress. So regardless of how stressful you are, do not try to end your stress by completing suicide. Please don't do that. Suicidal thoughts and action signs are extremely distressful, not harmless, bid for attention. These things should not be ignored. So if you know somebody that is suicidal, please assist them in getting the assistance that they need. Um, suicidal thoughts, uh, much like mental health conditions, can affect anyone. Again, regardless of age, gender, background, socioeconomic status, anybody can be within that realm of being suicidal, having ideations or having attempts. So we definitely want to ensure that we're not ignoring somebody because of that status or lack of status. Um, in fact, suicide is often the result of untreated mental health conditions. Suicidal thoughts are although common should not be considered normal um, and often indicate serious issues, you know, again, whether that's in the home, school, community, work environment. Um, so being that it's September, and September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, it's a time to raise the awareness um, and to remove that stigma that's associated with it because like many things within certain demographics, these topics are still taboo. So a lot of people are afraid to ask their friends or their loved ones about uh, suicide or any other tough conversation because it's not a normal thing to talk about. Um, but talking about it, we could save lives. We could assist these people in getting the assistance that they need. In addition to shifting the public opinion, we use this uh, month to spread the awareness and hope that the information gets spread throughout the communities to prevent somebody from having these suicidal effects or ideations. Um, because the last thing we want to happen is not talking about it and now, oh man, your coworker or your family member or somebody, when all you had to do is ask those tough questions, you know, or send them a resource or send resources to them. 
Um, so within this month of September, we definitely want to ensure that individuals, friends, family have access to resources that they can, can discuss uh, preventing or seeking help for these suicidal ideations. Um, so listen, if you daily, you can post some or send it to me and I'll post it uh, to bring awareness about suicide or any other tough topic for that matter. Um, because I think awareness is important. I think ending the stigma is important. Throughout the month of September, I definitely encourage people to bring their voices together to advocate for better mental health care, for uh, more crisis intervention, more uh, positive responses from the community. Like all of those things are important. I want people to know, regardless of where you are or experiencing suicidal thoughts or behaviors, you have a number to call, you have a system to turn to. You definitely have uh, ways to connect with different people who assist you, whether it's in treatment or just being a support system. Um, so information that you can use to help somebody is, of course, know the warning sign, different risk factors, which I covered earlier. Um, and you can go to my website for any other one. You probably can Google, you probably go to NAMI.org. I'm sure they probably have it on theirs as well. Um, you can also be prepared for a crisis. Uh, help them navigate mental health, crisis situations or resources. Um, if you need more information or referrals or support, then again, contact NAMI, National Alliance for Mental Illness. Put in your zip code within your area, they'll definitely help you out. Um, or you can dial 800-273-TALK. This is the same number I gave at the beginning, 800-273-8255, um, or call 911. But the first number was the suicide hotline. They can assist you. They can talk to you. They can help you find resources within your immediate area. So it's definitely worth having that conversation. Um, definitely be aware of your resources. While suicide prevention is most time isn't addressed, like we should address it all year round, not just the month of September, but of course, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So during this month, we definitely want to ensure that we're providing and dedicating different time to the collective of passion, um, strength, or difficulty around this tough topic. You know, so the truth is we can all benefit from an honest conversation within this mental health condition, whether it is suicide or um, a conversation is definitely important, you know, because we'll never know who we are affecting. Um, and when I say affecting, we got to think about the individual impact of suicide. 78% of the people who die by suicide are males. Although more women than, um, than men attempt suicide, men are nearly four times more likely to die by suicide and by more lethal means. Um, suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34 and the 10th leading cause of death in it uh, overall within the United States. So just listen, you probably got a kid right now who falls into that age 10 to adolescent range and you yourself, with you know, my generation, you're at that 34, I'm 35, you're at that range, you know, so just look back, look at your immediate circle, look at your family and friends, look at your coworkers. Um, definitely put yourself in a position to be that ally, that resource. Um, more individual impact. The overall suicide rate in the U.S. has increased 35% since uh, the year 2000. So we're looking at 21 years ago. Since then, it has continued to increase 35%. That's a significant number. And just the past couple of years has been highly detrimental. You know, we know it's been taking place with the injustices, the uh, COVID situation, so many different reasons. Um, so again, more individual impact is 40% of the people who died by suicide had a diagnosis of a mental health condition. Um, while nearly half the individuals who died by suicide have, di have been diagnosed with a mental health condition, um, research also showed that 90% of them experienced some type of symptoms. Um, listen, this just doesn't impact your immediate family or your friends. This is a community issue. This impacts the community as well. So that demographic, 4.8% uh, of all adults attempt suicide or die by suicide. 11.8% um, of young adults age 18 to 25. 18.8% uh, of high school students are dying by suicide. 46.8% of lesbian, gay, bisexual high school students. Um, listen, that is a... Those are strong numbers for anybody, but just to know that our young people are suffering and, and willing to uh, end it by suicide is 
should be alarming. You know, some of the highest rates of suicide in the U in the United States are among American Indians, Alaskan Natives, and non-Hispanic white communities. Um, LGBTQ plus youth are four times more likely to accept, attempt suicide than uh, a straight youth. Um, when we're talking about transgender adults, they're nearly 12 times more likely to attempt suicide than anybody within the general population. Suicide is the leading cause of death for people uh, held within local jails and uh, other institutions. So again, some of the resources, if you know anybody who is dealing with this crisis immediately and you don't know the long 800 number, then call 911. 911 will assist you and get you the resources you need to assist your family member, your friend, your coworker. Um, so if you are in a crisis at, or experiencing difficulty, suicide or thoughts, you definitely can call the National Suicide Hotline, which again, the number is 800-273-TALK, 800-273-8255. Uh, put the number in your phone. Have it, you know, I pretty much got it memorized at this point because sadly I've had to use it and send it to people um, on multiple occasions or interrupt, um, you know, being within a crisis situation. So if you are uncomfortable making a phone call, you can definitely text um, the NAMI hotline, 741-741, and they will connect you for free uh, to a different crisis counselor or different resources uh, to assist you. Um, there's so many different treatments and therapies, but of course, you definitely want to ensure that you're creating a safety plan, a specific plan for this individual. Um, they've been known to help, you know, it's a lot of pushback uh, from different people though, saying like if they want to harm themselves or hurt themselves, they go ignore this contract. Now, in some cases, the safety plan in this contract definitely helps. Um, people who work with caregivers to develop a plan described as limited um, access to lethal means such as firearm pills, uh, different poisons and stuff like that. So try to eliminate certain things that you have laying around if you know this person is dealing with suicidal ideations. Um, that plan also has a list of different coping strategies that you can do, different resources that one can use. Um, and of course, follow up with a phone call. Research has shown that when somebody is at risk for suicide, they need further screening. They need that safety plan intervention. They need that, hey, I'm just calling to check on you. That support a phone call can go a long way. Um, the risk of suicide goes down when you are actively trying to assist somebody find resources and being a resource for somebody. So you definitely want to ensure that you're using different uh, hotlines and stuff. So the crisis text line again, 741-741. Veteran crisis hotline is 800-273-8255. Um, and again, you can also dial 273-8255 for the National Suicide Hotline. So either one, if you're a veteran or if you're just a regular citizen, um, in the community, definitely utilize those resources. Hit me up, like, share, subscribe. Let me know if you need any other resources. Hit my website, email me, hit me on social media. I'll definitely be sure to, you know, provide your resources if I can. Appreciate you for checking in.